Hatha yoga is like observing a majestic tree, so abundant with fruit, healthy, sturdy, upright, and regal looking. It's not meant to be practiced randomly, like you're going to pick up like fallen fruit from the tree and then just practice them because they're easy to pick up. You need to work it. So it becomes you. You become this beautiful, majestic creation. And it's difficult, really. It takes a certain nature, a certain attitude. And then that nature is a person who is explorative, content, patient and not easily swayed by quick fixes or instant rewards. And also, this is nature of being a self-learner. Yes, you will gain insights from the many resources out there, but you grow it, yeah, so it becomes you. You become the technique. One of the common issues we encounter and mistakes we commit, and this includes myself when I was studying, is the overemphasis on what we see external. That the techniques become quite external. Where in fact, what we need to develop is the openness within, the strength within. And I'm not being poetic, we need to develop and purify the internal system. So in Hatha Yoga, we need to start from there. Sort out the body first, and the rest shall follow. The techniques happen without you learning them. Therefore, you understand it not from the external superficial essence, but from within, and what is actually working inside for them to happen safely, meaningfully, and effectively. Pranayama, for example, ujjayi. There's so much emphasis on the sound. The sound will just happen if your bandhas and the nadis are open to direct the breath or the energy through the needed centers. In the Ujjayi Pranayama, the Uddiyana Bandha opens up to lift the Apana up to the chest. Actually, the unified force already yeah, combined yeah, in the Manipur and they yeah, rise, ascend to the heart where there's another Bandha refining that energy the re, therefore only yeah, the refined state is allowed to enter the Jalandhara. And the Jalandhara Bandha furthers refine it. So we can only allow a fraction of that stimulating energy to the brain. So we don't overpower the soma inside. And the sound is there, but it's not loud. The person beside you might hear your breath but not the entire class. It's very personal, actually. I then learn Ujjayi. And then the other deeper aspects of Hatha Yoga, they just happen, really, to tell you the, the truth. I just find myself one day just breathing Ujjayi. I could do Bastrika, but I then learn Bastrika as a separate practice. Plavini, for example, which is not commonly yeah, talked about, it just happened to me as I practice. I could feel <laughs> my pelvis breathe for me and then my tongue becoming more involved. I then learn Kapalbati, which is another techniques uh, commonly misunderstood in the Kapalbati Shat Karma. Yeah. You're not actually breathing. Yeah? 
So the only preparatory breath you take is that first breath in to, which, or to, to buffer you know, your internal organs. And on top of that, you just blow the air. It's really just the air. It's not actually the breath. Because in the Shatkarma of Kapalbhati, there's so much emphasis on the belly pulling in and the sound it emits. No. They are just the side effect. Once your nadis are able to yeah, hold the buffer inside and at the same time utilizing your bandhas yeah, in making sure that you're not doing the technique so powerfully. I could actually do it non-stop. Yeah. Although Kapal Bhatishat Karma forms part of the initiation rites, for me, yeah, it happens towards the middle. Yes, you can learn it as a beginner, but the meaning or the essence of it shall happen. Yeah. Once you've gained yeah, inner strength, yeah. and of course, the uh, purification of your nadis. So what for me is an essential? Asana. Yeah. Make your body strong, resilient, mobile, to break free from the inertia. Next, Nadi Shodhana. Alternate nostril reading coming from a personal journey. I just practiced Nadi Shodhana. Yeah. I didn't practice the other techniques. Really, tell you the truth. Nadi Shodhana, 30 minutes in the morning, but before I was practicing longer, 30 minutes at night, in between I practice asana. And I, I do them over and over and over again. Yeah. You might call my practice boring because I do similar techniques day in, day out. But that's the essence. Do it until it becomes your nature. Therefore, your mind doesn't think anymore. It's like an automatic response to a particular technique you're practicing. And the other ones shall happen. You will just find yourself one day practicing Ujjayi. You will just find yourself practicing Kapalbhati. If you want to entertain other there, you know, Bastrika, Plavini, Murcha, you can do them. Yeah because they are the effect of your preparation. The compulsory, the fundamentals. And therefore, when you look at that tree again, you understand that the techniques are not fallen fruits because they're easy to pick up. You're going to practice them because they're easy. But the fallen fruit, are depleted of the life. Yes, yeah, it's part of it, but it's not it. The essence isn't there when you practice it randomly and superficially. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.